At a moment when the BMW 7 Series is taking a giant new leap for the brand, with the introduction of the i7, more people are beginning to look back to the days when the 7 Series not only promised to deliver on the goal of showcasing advancements in the motor car, but remained the one and only choice for those wanting the ultimate driving machine. The E38 BMW 7 Series was introduced in 1993, with staggered production dates of 23rd June 1993 for the first German and European customers and the 13th of January 1994 for US customers. The development of the model had begun half a decade earlier and the finalised design was agreed in 1991 ahead of schedule. Those watching our guide thinking the E38 may have had little to shout about as BMW's flagship car of the time when compared to the rolling computer of the latest model are about to find out just how far ahead BMW were though. When the E38 7 Series reached customers, it was the first BMW to offer a built-in television, it was the first European car to feature satellite navigation, and the first car in the world to feature canvas technology for body controls. Then, taking the title that Volvo would usually be aiming for, in 1997 an update added the world first in safety equipment by being the first production vehicle ever to feature side airbags and in a nod to driving enthusiasts, it would be the last 7 Series to be offered with a manual gearbox. This final point is was slowly making the E38 generation a modern classic today and raising its profile from a tired old luxury car to falling into the hands of enthusiasts that are restoring them to their former glory and reaping the rewards. But beware, as you'll see throughout our buyer's guide there is plenty to look out for and so whether you are hoping for some 90s nostalgia, a project to enjoy, or miss being able to cruise in luxury but still have the spirit of a driver's car beneath you on a Sunday morning, it's worth remembering premium cars, even old ones, still have premium bills. The E38 ended production in 2001 with the last model leaving the factory on the 27th of July 2001. Over 335,000 were built, with just shy of a quarter in 740i variant and another quarter in 740IL, making them the ones you'll find the greatest choice for. Behind it is the 728i and 730i, and if you want an E38 with a compression engine then the 730d model was the most popular of the diesels. Interestingly, in overall numbers, the 750i was more popular than the 730d, meaning the most powerful model shouldn't be too hard to find. If you want a challenge and desire your 7 Series to be rarer than anyone else's, You'll either need to go for an L7, which were limousine specification, with under 1,000 units sold, or an armoured protection line model if you can find one. Want something even rarer? How about one of the 15 production 750LH models? Today, the talk of combustion engines using hydrogen is gathering pace, but BMW had been looking at the technology for over three decades. Sadly, these examples appear to have since been broken for parts, or kept by BMW on a buyback scheme. The final iteration for those wanting an E38 that stands out would be the Alpina B12. Strictly speaking, this isn't a 7 Series, as Alpina are a recognised manufacturer in Germany with their own VIN added, but what BMW enthusiast doesn't love an Alpina? The B12 is offered as a 5.7 in regular wheelbase, or 6 litre in extended wheelbase models. In total, just over 300 were built, with two thirds in regular wheelbase specification. Unfortunately, the safety rating for the E38 7 Series is unregistered, and rather than its score being expired, it is not listed in NCAP or IAHS for us to state, so we'll skip this section of the guide. But mention the 5 Series of the time achieved 4 stars out of 5, and BMW claimed in their promotional material that the 7 Series exceeded safety standards by 36%. Moving on to the recalls and all are over two decades old, so we'll give a short recap. Three recalls were made in 1996. These were for rear axle hub, faulty fuel supply lines for engines coded M60 and M73, and the fuel pump. In 2001, a recall was issued due to a manufacturing defect on the auxiliary cooling fan, which could cause the fan to fail and risk an engine overheat situation. Next up are the common faults and a reminder to subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying our content as we really do appreciate both our new and existing members of the Miles Driven community and hope to continue offering our content to you in the future. First up are radiator failures, usually occurring in intervals of 50,000 miles, although updated or aftermarket fitment parts are proving themselves to last much longer. 
If you find a low mileage E38 7 series with no record of a new radiator, it may be best to get it done as preventative maintenance. Power steering leaks are usually caused by power steering hoses rather than the pump itself. As with any vehicle of this age, expect the exhaust to need replacement if it has never been changed. Catalytic converters regularly manage over 100,000 miles without a problem, but higher mileage buyers may want to get a whole new system to make sure exhaust gases are flowing out of the engine at an optimum rate. An oil pressure switch failure will cause an oil light on the dashboard. If you're not confident in changing this part yourself, ask a seller if they have any record of this being done to avoid a workshop bill. We found several E38s advertised with faults in the power adjustable seats. Most were locked in one position. A common cause is failure of the wiring underneath the seat as it can become brittle or chafe on the material around it causing it to eventually break. Ask an owner if they've ever had a replacement oil pump or inspection of the oil pump with the oil pan removed. If not then it is worth getting this done, usually with a new oil pan when you have your first oil service. The main reason for inspection is due to reports of oil pumps either working a bolt loose or chipping off fragments of metal from the casing with age. Most owners now have a new sump, new oil pump and some fresh oil after buying an example they plan to keep to eliminate the risk of the engine ingesting parts from a failing oil pump. Sticking with servicing, if buying an automatic it is imperative to use the correct oil and filter. Failure to do so will likely cause errors, slipping in gear and failure. Owners report a shimmy or wobble at speed in the E38 which is usually one or more front suspension components failing. For those restoring a model and intend to replace all the bushings and restore or replace components, this shouldn't be an issue as the offending item will get swept away in the rebuild. For those wanting to narrow down the issue it can be more tedious as even after replacing worn bushes and old looking components, some owners couldn't remove the shimmy without further work. The positive is that this is a mechanical issue and through the process of elimination and meticulous workmanship you will get your E38 handling as it should once more. As an extension to our earlier mention of radiators and cooling fan recall, one area of the E38 does suffer is throughout its cooling system. Everything from piping to expansion tanks will be showing their age if they have not been replaced. A thorough test and walk round of the system is a good way of identifying areas that may need repair or preventative maintenance before they fail. If buying an example built after 1997, be aware of ABS and ASC warning lights likely caused by a failure of the Bosch control unit. Fortunately this issue is well understood and repair guides can be found online. As ever our lists are non-exhaustive and we encourage owners to leave a comment if we've missed a fault they believe is becoming more common or something they have come across during their ownership. Next up are the engines and we'll start with the diesels but first the gearbox is on offer. If you want an automatic you'll find a 5 speed ZF ubiquitous but manuals are either a 5 speed or in the 740i model a 6 speed. Though it should be noted that the gearbox selection for manuals varies depending on your region. The 725 TDS model was the only diesel offered throughout the lifespan of the E38 sold from 1995 to 2001 with the M51 unit producing 141 brake horsepower with an average of 35.1 miles per gallon or 8 litres per 100 kilometres. We found carbon deposits to be the biggest owner complaint that led to further issues. EGR and turbo problems can materialise but overall the motor is considered reliable. If the engine won't start when hot then the likely culprit is an ECU that isn't commanding the glow plugs to get things started. Service history with lots of regular oil changes is a positive buying sign. Most owners looking for a diesel will likely want the M57 fitted to the 730D due to its mix of power, performance and reliability. Making 184 brake horsepower and averaging 32.1 miles per gallon or 8.8 .8 litres per 100 kilometres. Due to the overall longevity most owners have found with the engine, common problems appear to be age related with items simply reaching the end of their service life rather than failing. One note would be ask an owner if they've ever had any of the injectors replaced as these can be a costly job. The most powerful diesel was fitted to the 740D. The 3.9 litre V8 engine makes 241 brake horsepower with an average of 28.2 miles per gallon or 9.8 litres per 100 kilometres. Although these are robust engines, the poorer fuel economy means that many prefer to go for a V8 petrol and so fewer 740D models are on the used market. Pressure regulators, flow meters and EGR units are the most common failure 
to ask if any of these have a history of causing an issue on a potential purchase. Moving on to the petrol engines and the 728i starts off the range, producing 192 brake horsepower from its straight 6 M52 motor. It was revised in 1998 so that peak power arrived slightly earlier in the power band. 27.4 miles per gallon or 10.31 litres per 100 kilometres makes the 728i less to run than many of the more powerful models, but it isn't just fuel savings that can be had. The main area of concern on a 728i is its service history. The engine is reliable with good maintenance, and so if you find one with a documented history, take it as a positive buying sign. Next up is the M60 and M62 motors. The M60 is offered as a 3 litre in the 730i model, making 215 brake horsepower, and the 740 model with a 4 litre capacity producing 282 brake horsepower. The 730i model was dropped in 1996 with the 735i taking its place fitted with the M62 motor in 3.5 litre capacity. Power is rated at 231 brake horsepower until 1998 and then up to 235 brake horsepower. The same timing can be applied to the 740i with the M60 motor leaving the range in 1996 replaced with the M62 in a 4.4 litre capacity with a second update in 1998 retaining the engine code and size. For the 740i brake horsepower stays the same but torque is improved with 15 pound feet increases at each update. Fuel economy across the range varies but 22 to 26 miles per gallon or 12.84 to 10.86 litres per 100 kilometres should be expected as an average. Screws for the oil pump can become dislodged over time and drop down into the pan making it essential to inspect. Vanos failure on the M62 motors have become a common complaint from owners due to the failure of the O-rings. Finally, leaks from the rear main seal can cause oil and coolant to mix in the valley of the V. We will note that the Nicosil liners cause some issues with areas featuring high seal for fuel. However, this problem is much less prominent today as most markets will only have low seal for fuel offered. We had to go back to forum posts from the mid 2000s to find any consistent issue and so we believe most owners no longer consider this a problem but please add it to the comments advising us if you believe this information is incorrect. The final engine is the 750i's 5.4 litre V12 coded M73 producing 322 brake horsepower with a steady average of 17 to 19 miles per gallon or 16.62 to 14.87 litres per 100 kilometres. Owners have said that they could better this on a long drive, and as some added E38 trivia, the hydrogen model would do 5.6 miles per gallon or 50 litres per 100 kilometres on hydrogen alone. Electronic throttle bodies can become problematic, and so if you find one that has had these replaced at a BMW specialist, take it as a positive buying sign. Mass airflow sensors can also throw up an engine fault. Aside from this, owners generally consider these engines very reliable, but maintenance is key and unless looking at a restoration, then an example with zero history should be at the bottom of your shortlist. For our picks, it was tougher than usual. The diesels tempted us, especially on a smaller budget, but the 728i won us over on the lower end. On a higher budget, it really should be the 740i, but we're going to suggest the 750i due to the rarity of a V12, and with the final 7 series to ever feature a V12 sold over a year ago, the unique experience of 12 cylinders is only going to get rarer from here. If you think BMW's first SUV, the X5, or newer fourth generation E65 is tempting, then why not check out our guides to them next? As ever, all the best with your car search, whether you have the money in your pocket or are dreaming of a future purchase, and don't forget to check out our new merchandise shop to support the channel.